Hey guys, it's Cassie Acker Gamer, and today I'm playing a little bit of a different game. It is called Unmemory. It is it's like a novel that's a game, so it's going to look like a book. We're going to read it like a book. I don't think there's narration. We're going to have to actually read it. And then there's puzzles within it, I think, that correlate to the story. So the screenshots kind of made it look like we're just reading a Kindle. I'm not really sure i think it's also kind of like choose your own adventure or something it just seemed a little different than what i normally do and i thought i would give it a try put on your headphones and turn up the volume pump up the jam pump it up i might need to take notes handy dandy notebook it doesn't say handy dandy notebook what else do we need i can dig into my notes read 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 the red notebook blood there's blood everywhere my hands, my arms, my legs are covered in blood. I'm completely naked. I'm sitting on a bed, not wearing any clothes. That's the first thing I remember. Oh, this is cool. So I can scroll. There's a phone. Can I? I can't do anything. Whoa. The bed sheets are stained with remnants of dried blood. The blood on my hands is also dry. I wonder if it's my blood and where it came from. I touch my face, my head. I check my stomach. There's a bandage tied around my ribs and it hurts to move. I'm wounded, but how did this happen? Who did this to me? The room I'm in is pretty big. The decor is basic. There's a small desk, a wooden wardrobe, and an armchair in the corner. I don't recognize any of it. I don't remember if I've been here before. On the bedside table, I spot a telephone and what looks like a jar of pills. The ceiling fan spins round and round. I think the walls are painted, or maybe they're decorated with wallpaper? I don't remember. There's a window next to the bed. The curtains are closed, but light streams in. Next to me is a briefcase. It's black and made of leather, I think. It seems as though there's something inside, but I can't open it. It has a padlock. So what is this... Okay. All right. I don't know what the code is. Maybe we can come back to this stuff. I struggle to get up and take a few steps in bare feet. The wound in my stomach pulses. There's a pair of sunglasses, several rolls of camera film, and a piece of paper with a map drawn on it. There's clothes scattered across the floor. I rummage around and find some pants and a pair of boots to wear. I put on a shirt too, and that's when I notice a painting on the wall above the desk. There's nothing special about it, but I can't look away. I think there are birds, perhaps owls, or is it an eagle? No, I'm wrong. It's a black swan. I still haven't found anything that explains where I am. I wonder how the hell I got here. The door of the bedroom is ajar. I leave it and go down some stairs. I reach a spacious living room. It's pretty empty. There's only a sofa, a round table, and chairs, a lamp, a fireplace, and a TV set. I don't recognize anything here either. There's no blood in this room. There's a door at the back of the room. I approach it slowly and realize that it's locked. Next to it is a window with the curtains drawn. I open the blinds with my fingers. Oh, that's neat. So we can see what's around us. Okay. I think I saw a building. There's a building. I can see the rooftops of the surrounding buildings. Nothing that rings a bell. There's nobody around and not a single car. Everything seems so peaceful. Just smoke rising from chimneys. And a few birds in the sky. I don't seem to be near the city. The sky is gray and I can't see the sun, so it's hard to tell what time it is. It could be around 2, 3 in the afternoon? I'm not sure. It's cold. How long have I been here? Whoa! So this is the peephole. Is that supposed to be a one or something? So I don't know. Oh, there we go. I didn't realize I could click on that. Hello? Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a person. Whoa! Hello, is anybody home? I'm here to deliver a package. Uh, hello? I approach the door slowly on my on tiptoe. I hold my breath as I look through the peephole. There's a man outside. He has a beard and is wearing glasses and a hat. Sir, open up. I have a package for Jay Hansen. It's, it's urgent. I don't say a word. He continues to knock on the door. He's holding a package under his arm. 
come on, I know you're in there, so please open up. Now he's getting angry. Sir, I've been trying to deliver this package for days. The security guard told me that a Mr. or Mrs. Hansen lived in a yellow house in one of the odd number departments, but he couldn't remember which number it was. There's only three yellow houses, and I've already asked your neighbors at number 15 and 19. No one that goes by the name of Hansen lives there, so it must be here. Come on, open up. Pause for a second. We are going to write down that it's apartment, it's between 15 and 19, and it's an odd number, so we're apartment 17, and our last name is Hansen. He suddenly stops talking, and the knocking ceases. Silence. Is he still there? Look, I know you're in there. The TV's turned on. I can hear it. I hear him as he turns to leave, but before he does, he threatens. Okay, then. As you wish. Don't open your door, but I saw you arrive here with that girl. Interesting. Oh, this was the TV. Let's turn it off. Oh, well, wait. Can I turn on different channels? Really lacks somebody who during crunch time could say, hey, this is so cool. We're not going to lose this ball game. And the other area would be the center position. Well, no All right. I tiptoe towards the TV and turn it off. That's when I think I hear something. A continuous drip, drip, drip. It's water. I walk from room to room looking for a running faucet. I go into the kitchen, but all the faucets are turned off. Everything seems normal, but... For a moment, I forget about the noise and open the door of the fridge. Perhaps I'll find something that'll tell me where I am. In the fridge? There's nothing inside, just a few cans of beer. It doesn't seem as though anyone lives here. I keep searching. The noise leads me to an open door. It must be the bathroom. I go inside, and then... That's when I see her. There's a body in the tub. I think it's a girl. She's blonde, skinny. Her hair's covering her face. She's wearing a t-shirt, a pair of tight jeans, and leather boots. Her clothes are spattered with blood. She's wearing a t-shirt, a pair of tight jeans, and leather boots. Her clothes are splattered with blood. I walk over and crouch down next to her, but she's not breathing. She's dead. Her stomach's covered in blood. She has a gunshot wound. Somebody shot her. Oh. 1973. I wonder if that's the code. What does this say? Mars is the cutest animal. What? Okay, Um, we are going to go back for a second. We're going to pause. Can we go back a page so I can try? Okay, great. It's up here. I can just scroll up, and we are going to put the just the date that was on her arm in. I doubt it means anything, but it's the only four-digit number we've seen. It's 1973. No, that wasn't it. Okay. I need to figure out who she is. I carefully lift her arm away from her body. I gently turn it and see that she has several tattoos. I turn a little more to see symbols and a number, but there's nothing that tells me who she is. I carefully move her hair out of her face, but I don't recognize her. I don't know who she is, or do I? I get up and scrub my hands and face. It isn't easy to get all the blood off. When I take my hands away from my face, that's when I see myself in the mirror. My own reflection terrifies me. Who did this? Who killed the girl? Was it me? A million questions going through my head. I turn off the faucet and leave the bathroom. I need answers. I scour the house in search of anything that can help make sense of all this. I open drawers. I look inside closets, but nothing. The shelf below the TV set is lined with CD albums. There is also a book. I pick it up. The front cover is strange, and it suddenly occurs to me go out to go out and look out. It suddenly occurs to me to go out and look inside the mailbox. Maybe there will be some letters that'll tell me where I am and who owns this house, but I stop myself. Maybe that guy's still here waiting for me. Or what if someone sees me? I should stay indoors. So what's different about this? Through the, It's just Alice looking through the, through the looking glass. Hmm. Okay. I go back to the bedroom where I first woke up. I open the drawers of the desk and find some matches, pen, and some sort of device I've never seen before. I take a closer look at it. It Looks like a label maker, but I think it's broken. That's the same symbol. Can I put in... Oh, it's missing the number. 1973 and an ampersand. I don't think the ampersand's on there. We'll come back to that. I empty out the pockets of a pair of pants on the floor. I find a set of what I think are car, are car keys. There's also a wallet. I open it and find some money in a video club card that falls out onto the floor. I take a look at the name, the picture... I'd say it's the girl in the tub. Is that the phone from up here? 
Hold on a minute. Is that this phone? Hello? Listen. Listen carefully. I don't have much time. There's a black briefcase. You must open it. Okay. Start with the number tattooed on her arm. Subtract the number of the Plank TV channel. Minus the apartment where you are. Please. You must find the red notebook. That's what's important. Find it. Okay. Please. Do it from... All right, that was helpful. That was helpful. This game is really neat. I really like this format. Okay, so the blank channel is 50. So 1973 minus 50 is 1923. Minus the apartment number, which we so intellectually <laughs> deduced, I don't know, was 15. So we're going to do 1923 minus 15, which is going to be 1908. And I am so confident about that, but, you know, I could be totally wrong. 1973 minus 50. Are there, is there more than one blank channel? Really? Okay. Oh my god, I was so wrong. The apartment number is 17. I don't know where the hell I got 15 from. So it's 1906. I don't know where the hell I got 15. There we go. The padlock clicks open and I open the briefcase. Inside, I find a wad of cash, some clothes, and a cell phone. There's no sign of the red notebook. The only in thing of interest is a photo with a message on the back. I take it and put it, put it with the rest of the things I found in the house. So we have found this photo, which I'm assuming this is the one that's dead. Ladies who lust. Huh, what is this? Somerset and Co. Some film. Deborah J. Steinbecker. Cool. Let's go back down. This is really neat. I really, really enjoy this format. Even if you guys don't, I enjoy it. Oh, what's this? So in the book, okay, so in the book, the Alice in Through the Looking Glass book, we have some letters that are circled. That means they're probably gonna make a word. So we have E, N, C, P. Lily is important. S, O, T, Y, M. And open the box. Lily, open the box. Okay, that's something we have. And then we have more letters. F, I, N, E, T, B, E. I'm sorry, T, B, A, N, D, it. Huh, so. I think this is a substitution thing, right? So what if we just put in E? Yep, yeah, it's gonna be substitution because it's one letter off here. So E, N, C, P, S, O, T, Y, M. What does that mean? 2R, XR, 1Z, L, N, W. I don't know what that means, but I will write it down. I guess we should cut it off now. That is probably wrong. As I bend down to pick it up, I spot a safe under the desk. I crawl towards it on my knees and try to pry it open. It's locked. Suddenly, something catches my eye. Something shiny underneath the bed. It's it's a gun. Wh whose is it? Could it be mine? Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so it's going to be 2R. Wait, let's start over. Okay, O, 2, R, X, R. So the first ones are L, R, L. Two to the right, X amount to the left. What does that mean? I'm gonna assume zero. I'm gonna assume X is zero. So two R, two to the right. I'm gonna say zero to the left. I'm gonna say one to the right and one to the left. That didn't work. Uh, let's, let me go through this again. C P O S O T Y M. Yeah, I got the same thing. I don't know what that means. Is there a space? I'm gonna take a hint. Blame your or maybe it isn't. Perhaps if you try some letters, you'll get some sort of combination. I did that. This says finest bandit, but I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. So let me make sure I got all the one the letters the right way. M Y T O S. Yep. P 
P-E-C-N-E. Yep. Let's look at um, the stuff we have. Is it Roman numerals? I think it might be Roman numerals, actually. So we'll go with... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I get it now. It, it will tell me if I get it right. So it's two to the left. We know that for certain. Oh, it's all the ones with ampersands. I'm so dumb. 46R is going to be this one. Okay, I don't know what the answer to this is. Okay, so I looked it up. Oof. And I would have, I don't know how they got this, but okay. So it is 37R, 21L, 15R, and 07L. I don't know how they got that. If anybody knows, can you explain it down below? Because I think I'm too dumb. That's the code. Great. Lick my legs. What the fuck is happening? It's here, huh? Finally. The red notebook. Looks like what? a diary. Someone's personal diary. But, um, why is it so important? Who's talking? We firmly believe in you, the person who's reading these pages. You, who will find out who we are and will accept us, you will be our accomplice, even if you don't want to be. We're going to tell you everything. Dirty things we've never told anyone, but only if you hack our debasers, you will know our... But only if you hack our debasers, we, you will know our deepest secret. So think about it good and hard, because once you're in, there's no way out. Deal? Sure, deal. Why am I watching this? Yeah, shh. I'll be quiet. Oh, that's a lot of stuff flashing very quickly. Am I supposed to click on? Oh, I clicked on one. I clicked. I don't know if, if it shows this because I clicked it. The hospital. I want to kiss her, but I can't. I'm tied up. I know she's there. I can feel her, but I can't see her. I'm blindfolded. She likes it that way. She runs her fingers along my lips. She caresses me slowly, so slowly. She whispers something in my ear, and then she suddenly stops. I feel her move away. Okay. She gets up from the bed and leaves. Wait a minute, she murmurs. So I wait. I wait for what seems like forever until I hear her footsteps. I try to figure out whether they are moving towards me or away from me. Silence. 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 What was that? A hollow blast shatters the silence. Diane? I call out to her. There's no reply. I try to get up, but I can't. I struggle. I'm still tied up. A gunshot? What, was it a gunshot? I ask myself. I call her name again, and she doesn't reply. Diane! Nothing. Suddenly, I hear another deafening blast. This time, my chest is on fire. Have I been shot? I try to break free, but I can't. I grit my teeth and pull with all my might. 
pain, pain, excruciating pain, and I scream. I scream her name, Diane, but that's the last thing I remember. That's what happened. No, no, wait, she said something right before she was shot? She said a name. No, no, please, Jay, no. Don't do it. Jay! No, Jay! Jay Hansen. Jay Hansen, he's the killer. Yes. We know who done did it. Told us that before. That's the only thing you can remember. But it's just not enough. If you want to find Diane's killer, we need more. Look, besides the red notebook, we found a strange device inside the safe. It's locked. But you know what? Its name, Debaser RS3 appears in the notebook next to this message. Listen. Call your kitty and enter Mars three times. What do you think it means? Who is your kitty? Come on. Try to remember, please. Call your kitty and enter Mars three times. Call your kitty. I don't know what that means. Do we need to go back to the... F can I... I can't go back to the phone. Okay. So I'm assuming there's going to be another phone or something. Why am I here? I ask her. When can I leave? She doesn't reply. I don't know if I've seen her before. All the nurses in uniform look the same to me. She presses a button in the back seat. Of oh, is this is this the same person from before? I don't know. All the nurses in uniform look the same to me. She presses a button and the backrest of my bed begins to rise. Once I'm sitting upright, she comes over to me and gently removes the bandages from around my head. She takes a piece of cotton wool and soaks it in sterile saline or something similar. She cleans the wound gently. My stitches feel tight. A clock. Great. I don't know what this means. Oh, well, wait. Can I make it look like that tattoo? You know, with the like weird X thing? It kind of reminds me of like Blair Witch or something. Maybe not. That's much better, she says. I look at her and she returns a smile. I ask her if everything's okay. The doctor will come by at 11, she says. It'll be lunchtime soon. Next, she checks my stats and drip level. Push the red button if you need anything, she says as she turns and leaves the room. Light comes in through the window. I look at the clock on the wall, and I wait for the doctor to come. Okay, so we need to make it 11. Let me just go backwards. That's a lot faster. There we go. 11 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. What time is that clock set at? Oh, 11. 15. Eleven twenty. That's three, four, five, six. So uh, I think eleven twenty. I don't know. Let's just read this, and then we'll figure it out. <sighs> the doctor stands before me, checking his notes. He's short and has black curly hair. His name is on his white coat. What's wrong with me? Why am I here? I ask. He shows me X-rays of my brain. Seems that, in addition to the stitches, I also have internal damage to the hippocampus. He says. I ask him if I'll get better. You must be patient, he tells me. He explains that I suffered a brain injury and it's causing an enterograde. He explains that I suffered a brain injury and it's causing enterograde amnesia. This means that every so often I lose my memory. Sometimes it's a matter of minutes, sometimes days. My condition isn't very common, so he can't give me a prognosis. Technically speaking, my short-term memory is fine. It's my long-term memory where the problem is. I can remember what happened before the accident, yet from that moment on, my brain can't form new memories. It's important that I exercise the damage part. The doctor says he doesn't know how much of my memory I can get back, but I need to try. I should stimulate memory through smell, touch, and taste triggers. This will help me form new memories and recall them later on. So will sensations, like pain. Music and pictures, too. 
what do we have here? Camera. Okay. It's important that you take photos and record voice messages, he says. He puts a camera and a voice recorder on my bedside table. And take notes. You should write down everything you need to remember. Names, places, telephone numbers, he insists and points out a notebook. It'll help you train your memory. Doctor, do you know who killed Diane? I asked him. Remember to take your medicine, he replies without looking at me. Don't worry about that right now. The police are dealing with it, he says as he comes over to me and checks my drip. The nurse puts two pills on the bedside table next to me. I'll need some water to swallow them. What did that do? What does that mean? Oh, it was just showing that I took the pills. Gotcha. Eddie Coyle played bass in a band that was pretty well known. He was my roommate a while back. We used to hang out a lot back then. He had a girlfriend. He met her at one of our gigs. He fell for her like he'd never fallen for anyone before. Everywhere he went, she went too. At every one of his gigs, she'd be in the front row. They made plans together, but then something happened. Something strange. It was an accident, but no one knows how it happened. Some people say Eddie got beaten up. Others say it was the drugs. But the deal is that that's when the memory problem started. He began to lose his memory every so often. He could never predict when his memory would go. Sometimes he'd lose it after 10 minutes, other times after an entire day. At the start, his girlfriend was supportive, and she looked after him. She made sure he took his meds. She was optimistic that Eddie would soon get his memory back and go back to being himself, but that didn't happen. One day, he turned up, uh, one day she turned up dead in her apartment. Eddie was reported missing for three days until a neighbor found him half-naked on the beach. He couldn't remember a thing, except for one thing. Someone was asking him, Open your eyes. Ah! Can I close them now? Whoa. That was... Okay. Um, oh, okay, and now this shit's filled in. Dr. Ozuma... Cool, Dr. Azuma. And now we have stuff here. Interrograde, faulty memory, pin equals... Let's just actually do it this way. So we got a camera. Our notes. Pin. Pin equals 1, 2, 3, 4, f 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, B day. Uh... Don Epazil, hydrochloride, morning and afternoon, take photos, record voice messages. Okay, I've taken pills. Dr. Yoshima? That's a different name. Yoshimi, my bad. 86961. I don't suppose this works. No. Okay, back to the hospital. The nurse is looking at me. Her lips are moving. I think she's talking to me. You have to get dressed, she says. You have a visitor. My mouth is dry. My eyes are heavy. Mom, spaghetti! Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's inappropriate. I have the feeling that I've been asleep for a really long time. You were talking in your sleep, she says, as she helps sit me up. I couldn't make much sense of what you were saying, but it might help you to understand what's going on. Maybe you should record yourself. How, how long have I been here? I ask her. She takes my clothes out of the closet. Around three months, she says. Oh, so the the pen is seven birthday cakes. Oh, it's just my birthday, not seven can Jesus, I'm stupid. So my birthday is eight the birthday in this game is eight nine sixty one. So um eight nine six one. Welcome, okay. Should I put... Okay, it's one of the phones that has the letters and stuff, and it says to put to call Kitty and something about Mars three times. 
Okay, so what if we put M A R S M A M Is that a is that a number? The telephone number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please try again. Okay, what's what's the last number that was called? Aside from the one I just tried. The telephone number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please try again. Okay, we are going to come back to the aunt, I think. Wait a minute. There were the numbers, the numbers from the phone call that we had, oh, the first phone. I wrote those down. I think that was a number, like a telephone number. So let me try that one actually real quick before we move on. Eight, four, three, five, two, six, four, three. I wondered if a memory is something you have or something you have lost. What did that mean? Okay, we'll just continue. Putting on my clothes is an effort. My hospital bracelet gets caught in my sleeve. I bump into the table, trying to shake my arm free. The cell phone that was on top of the f telephone directly... The cell phone that was on top of the telephone directly fall... <laughs> God, why can I not say that word? The cell phone that was on top of the telephone directory falls to the floor. I go to grab it, but the nurse stops me. Come on, she presses as she picks up the phone. You have a visitor coming at three. All right, but I, I, I can't figure the phone out right now. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to make it three o'clock. I'm going to see if that, ha that helps speed things along because I have a visitor at three. So we are going to make it three o'clock. This is going to take a while. Yep, that worked. The killer kittens. Okay, call your call your kitten was something that it said. Oh, and there's the there's the I need to write that symbol down so I stop forgetting what it is. Uh caliber all debaser are belong to us. Okay. To be one of them, I need to know their secrets. Take a look at that door. It looks like it leads to a bar, don't you think? It actually leads nowhere. If you manage to open the lock, you'll find nothing more than a wall behind it, but with a surprise. It's one of our art pranks and also a great hideout. Tell her, Jamie. We love hiding things, and we've got many hideouts around the city, from a simple vending machine in a quarter street to a locker in a smoker's club. We call them debasers. But Debbie, are you saying anyone can find them? <laughs> Don't worry, Diane. All our debasers are locked with a combination. You need to know the code to open them. Church of the Flying Spaghetti Poster. Oh my god, I wonder if we can call that number. I'm going to write it down. So it's 1-800-PASTAFARI. Um, anything for a price from Han Solo. <laughs> I'm going to call these numbers. 426-7656. Just curious if, I mean, it's probably not going to add anything to the game. But it'll be funny. I have the Beholder, Saturn. What the fuck? Where did this come from? Is that a code down there? That might be a code. Okay, and then these. This is the planets. All right. Before we read on, I'm going to try those two numbers. So the 1 800 Pastafari. One. 
Okay, well, that t the touchdown didn't work on that. Let's call the other number, and then we'll move on. Hi. You've reached on Solo. I can't come to the phone right now, but everything is negotiable. Okay. Now let's go ahead and read on. Do you like to read? She asked me. She's blonde, and frankly, she's stunning. Her eyes are blue, and she's wearing a leather jacket. This is for you, she says as she hands me a comic. We're alone in the hospital visiting room. We're sitting at a table. I leaf through the pages. There's four girls on the cover underneath the title, The Killer Kittens. I need your help, the blonde woman with me says. I put the comic down and look at her. I don't remember if I've seen her be somewhere before. She looks me straight in the eye. I know who killed your girlfriend, she says. Who are you? I ask her. Do, do I know you? That's not important right now, she replies as she takes out a box of cigarettes from her purse. She opens it, takes one, puts it between her lips, and she lights it. So, do you want to know who killed Diane or not? She says after releasing the smoke from her mouth. I tell her she can't smoke here. Jay Summerost. His name is Jay Summerost, she says, and takes another drag. Jay, that's the name Diane screamed right before she was shot. I remember. Let's write that down. Pause. Write it down. Jay Samarost, that asshole. No! Jay! No! Jay! I need you to help me, she says and she leans as uh, she leans forward. She gestures for me to move closer. She's wearing red lipstick. I want him dead, she whispers. I ask her why. He hurt a friend of mine, she replies. He deserves to die. Dude, wouldn't you want him dead also because he killed your girlfriend? I tell her I'm stuck in this place. We're being watched. There's security cards everywhere. Don't worry about that, she replies. If you promise to help us give Summer Samorost what's coming to him, we'll help get you out of here. I don't reply. She stubs out her cigarette. You don't have to decide now. Think about it, she says as she takes a card out of her purse and hands it to me. Here's my contact. Oh. Your kitty. Oh, it's literally just your kitty. Oh, okay. Hold on, let's call her. Why? Oh. You... R K I T T Y Hi, it's your kitty. Please enter the planets after the tone. The extension you have dialed has not been recognized. Please try again. The planets? Um, okay, let's... I wonder if... If it's just the number for Mars three times. Hi, it's your kitty. Please enter the planets after the tone. Listen carefully. Got it. Okay. Open the Killer Kittens comic on page 25. Note the order in which the characters are speaking. That is the sequence to open Debaser. If you want to listen to this message again, please press redial. What? That's the order? Debbie and then Diane. Okay. So Debbie, Diane. Okay, that's the order for opening it. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, let's get back to dog and a kitty. Your kitty? I ask, is that your name? That's what you can call me, she replies. Then she puts on her glasses, her sunglasses and stands. Then she puts on her sunglasses, gets up and turns towards the door. Oh, and don't lose the comic, she says. If you do, we won't be able to help you. Inside, there's a lot more useful information than you think. 
wait a minute, I say. She turns. Do you mind if I take a photo of you? I ask. She pauses before taking off her sunglasses. I quickly take a photo of her with a Polaroid camera. And what about your phone number? I ask. You didn't give it to me. She puts the sunglasses back on and says, I did. When you're ready, you can call me on the number. You can call me on the number you're holding in your hand. I look at the card. It has a name on it, but no number. I turn it over to look at the bag, but there's nothing there. When I look up, she's already left the room. Enjoy the comic, she says as she walks away. And make sure you don't tell anybody. To make sure you don't tell anyone about our little conversation. I get the feeling she's here to help me. I write it on the photograph. I don't want to forget it. She could get me out of here, and she knows who killed Diane. She wants me to help her kill him. Hmm. Anything else? Oh, I didn't even notice there was more. I stay sitting at the table for a moment. I flick through the pages of the comic. I hear someone open the door behind me. It's the nurse. Looks like you have something to distract you, she says, pointing to the comic. You should get back to your room. She tells me to go with her. You're still not better. You need to rest. Before I can get up to leave, I hide the car that the girl gave me without the nurse noticing. Okay, okay. that's good. But the message in the notebook said to call your kitty and enter Mars three times. We need to find her number so we can open this device. I can open it. I know the order. Uh, the order is Debbie, Diane, Debbie. Don't worry, Diane. All our debates are still to the combination. You need to know the code to open them. Let me let me listen to this again. Hi, it's your kitty. Please enter the planets after the tone. Listen carefully. Open the Killer Kittens comic on page 25. Note the order in which the characters are speaking. That is the sequence to open Debaser. Diane, to to message, Diane, Debbie, Debbie, Diane. I don't understand. That is the order they're talking. I'm going to get a hint. Three girl characters in the comic. Oh my god, I was on... Oh my god, I didn't realize the entire thing was page 25. I just saw the one page. <sighs> um, okay, so who is this chick? So it's Debbie. So Debbie, Jamie, Debbie... Jamie, Jamie, Diane, Debbie. Okay, let's try that order and see if that's it. So we have Debbie, Jamie, Debbie, Jamie, Jamie, Diane, Debbie. Yes. Hush. Did it. Well done, my friend. Look at this Piper Club coaster. It has something written on it. Maybe we should head there now. Hmm. Diamonds and dates. Okay, I think this is where I will end this episode of on memory if you like that be sure to like comment subscribe share follow me at the links below be sure to come back tuesday wednesday thursday for more short videos and saturday slash sunday for more videos like this a little bit longer i hope i see you guys next time bye